to hell and back in 21 days um, is my story about what happened in 2014 um, when we had the Ebola epidemic in the Mano River Union. That's Liberia, Guinea, and Syria, Leo. Uh, you know about Ebola and how it is, and they were concerned. So they were having a meeting like the one, uh, something like this, and we were discussing it. We were uh, 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 finding ways to, to take them to the Ebola treatment unit. And while in this meeting, I started to experience a headache. Okay, I was sitting somewhere in the back, uh, me and a pediatrician, and the headache was so intense, so intense, it was like somebody had a sledgehammer in my, in my skull and just banging away, and I saw flashes of light. And I got out and went outside and went to the clinic. And my pulse was at 112, mm. okay, and at times 120. And then I had a fever, 38.2 degrees Celsius. And I said, wow, this is strange. I wonder what is this? <clears throat> and now my heart is racing at 112, and I thought that, well, probably this might be Ebola. And when I went home, I told my wife and kids, okay, I don't know what I have, so you guys, I will set my quarantine myself in my room, and then everybody just stay away from me. I don't know what's going on here and go to another location because I felt that I may be put them at risk. I got sick and I deteriorated. On day four, I felt a little better. By the evening time, they brought me some HIV medicine because, you know, since it's antiviral, they thought that, well, we don't have a cure, probably this will work, try it. And so I took it and chaos began begun that, that evening. We were not hearing about survivors at this time. And the space was made available for me and these guys were responsible for getting me there by getting the ambulance and what have you. In the ETU, that's day eight of my experience, I met Stephen Vincent, the guy who I was treating. Okay, now he's a physician assistant. Um, he had Ebola at the hospital from this same woman and um, he was the guy I was treating and this is the guy that I contracted the Ebola virus from. This is Vincent. On day nine, Vincent, um, I tried to call him, tried to talk to him and Vincent passed right next to me, right, right on my side and it was a terrible experience. I must also um, talk about a clinician. His name is Patrick. I want to introduce Patrick to you. As clinicians, uh, those of you who are doctors and nurses, I want to tell you about this guy. He's a great guy. We were on army cot, okay, about the size of this, um, low down, and it, it had leak-proof sheets. And when I went to the ETU on day, days eight and nine, I had so much vomiting and diarrhea that when I woke up in the morning, okay, I was in a sea of mess, okay? And Patrick came and saw me, and as he prayed for me, as he encouraged me, Patrick took water, chlorine water and soap and bathed me. He washed me clean from my nails to my chaps, every corner, every orifice. And as he's washing me, as he's cleaning me up, he's telling me, you'll get better. And, and, and don't worry, you'll get out of this. I thought that was a touch of love. That was the best experience I had in my whole ordeal. In fact, I, I, I trace my getting better to this one act because I was upset. I was going through all kinds of different negative emotions from anger, to sorrow, to crying, to depression. All kinds of things were going through my mind. And he did this, okay? It was from that moment I started to sit up, try to stand up, and walk around. And before that happened, before Patrick did this, something happened. Um, when you are an Ebola victim and you started to, 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 to do 
um, hiccups. That's what you call it, right? Hiccups. You suffer hiccup, or you try. You, I did. Hic I was hiccuping, and I was doing agonal breathing. Okay. And when you're doing that, that is the sign that you're about to go. Okay. And the guys brought the body bag, and and they were saying that, nah, he wouldn't make it. Okay. What would we tell his wife? He wouldn't make it. Okay. But as God will have it, uh, I made it. I made it. This is. That's me, actually. August 16th, the 21st day. So I was, I, I was Ebola free, and I went home to my family. After a snail-paced recovery, it wasn't like I had a flu and I was back one week afterwards, no. I mean, all the peripheral neuropathy took time, time to, uh, I mean, it took almost about eight to 10 months for me to come back to my real self. They let me know, they tested me and said, okay, Dr. Ireland, you're Ebola free. Well, I'm not happy, I'm still upset, I'm still angry. I, I, I'm taking responsibility, of, of partial responsibility that we have let our population down. A, thousands and thousands of people have died. Villages have been uh, uh, emptied because of this. Right now, we've recovered and we are on the way to developing the health systems and other systems again. So that is my story. Thank you very much for having me.